life is wonderfully varied. Biology is diverse. Biodiversity. That's the topic I'm going to talk to you about in this video. My name is David MacDonald and I'm the founding director of the Wildlife Conservation Research Unit, known as the Wild Crew, which is part of Oxford University. Now, biodiversity, what is it? Actually, it is the variety of life on Earth in all of its forms and considering all of its interactions. And that's a definition which you can see is pretty all-encompassing, put forward by E.O. Wilson, Edward Wilson, a famous biologist in 1988. So what does it mean, all of that diversity? It means not only species, which is probably what you're accustomed to thinking about most readily when you think about the variety of different sorts of animals and plants, but also the genes that make up the internal workings and characterization of those species, and the communities into which species assemble themselves, and at the landscape scale, the ecosystems, the functioning whole that combines these communities of animals and plants made up of individuals. So biodiversity is simply the whole lot. But let's just think about the amount of biodiversity there is. And probably, again, it's easiest to think about species. How many species are there? Well, about 1.2 million species of life forms have been described. But interestingly enough, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are many more that have not yet been described, but of course, it's hard to know what you don't know, isn't it? So just how many more species remain to be discovered? People have tried to make sensible estimates of this, but the estimates come out with pretty wide variation between 3 million species or 100 million species. But uh, one very notable biologist, Robert May, Lord May of Oxford as he's now known, came up with the best guess that there may be 8 or 9 million species. So maybe about 86% of species that exist have not yet been described. And the situation is more bleak for the oceans, where it may be over 90% of species that exist have not yet become known to science. So a big knowledge gap there. Where is this biodiversity? Uh, well, interestingly enough, it's not spread uniformly around the world. Coral reefs, for example, are particularly biodiverse. The tropics are wonderfully biodiverse. Many species per unit area live in these parts of the world. But think about it for a moment. What else do you know about the tropics? You know that that is also where poverty is paramount amongst people. So when you come to think about conservation, have it in mind that where some of the richest biodiversity is, is also where humanity suffers the greatest problems. This will turn out to be an important issue in conservation. So why should we care about biodiversity and its loss? There's some practical reasons, and I think we could divide them into two. Let's call them selfish and utilitarian for one category, and aesthetic or philosophical for another category. So to deal with these practical utilitarian reasons first. There are two basic categories of reason why the human enterprise, why every single one of you would be impacted by the loss of biodiversity. One is direct use. So direct use is where people, some group of people, use animals or plants to their benefit. There is a direct contribution to human well-being from the existence of some elements of biodiversity. But more pervasive and widespread is the indirect contribution. The human enterprise depends on the natural world. You need fresh water, fresh air, you need forests, you need oceans. All of these things underpin the existence of human society and the cogs that make that machine turn globally are biodiversity. Without biodiversity, there is no future for humanity. You may pause to consider how much of it we can afford to lose before that machine stops working. This means that the fashion of the moment is to try and put a cash value on biodiversity to illustrate to politicians and policymakers just how important it is. But actually, money, as you know, 
isn't everything. And biodiversity is also important because of its aesthetic or philosophical value to people just in terms of its existence and its beauty and its wonder. Think about the enchanting nature of nature and its workings. And if those things are lost, we end up all the poorer. It's an argument which, when I was a schoolboy, I termed the Mona Lisa argument. Rip it up and you can't put it together again. And so too with biodiversity. I think that these together make it clear that every single citizen is a stakeholder in biodiversity. Every single citizen has an investment in keeping biodiversity functional as well as beautiful. So, uh, just to recap, Biodiversity is pretty well everything that scuttles, slithers, runs or jumps or even stays in the same place growing. It is the story of life. Uh, it's distributed around the world in different ways. Much remains to be found out about it, but it's vitally important to the human enterprise and the future of society and it's in big trouble. So next, please take the learning check just to make sure you've got all these ideas about biodiversity clearly in mind. And the next video will be about ecosystem services, explaining to you just how your lives and everybody else's depend on the way that biodiversity constructs the world.